question is from Eric Rich. Any truth to squats and deadlifts thickening the waistline? Mm. This is one of those uh, one bodybuilder of those things, myths. Yeah, ah, that's the thickening. That is really hurt a lot of people's progress. There's, there's a few things that get promoted in the fitness space and the health space that cause cause a lot of problems. Um, now, I there is a little bit okay, and I'm going to say this with a grain of salt. A little bit of truth to this, in well, the sense that when you're doing heavy exercises that require a lot of core stability, you do work and build somewhat the muscles of the core. Now, how much are, are you going to add to your waist? Nothing perceptible. What's going to end up happening is you're going to feel tighter in the waist. This is a this is a this was something that was told uh, by, that bodybuilders have been selling for a long time. But the thing you got to consider with bodybuilders is the amount of drugs that they're on, the amount of muscle that they build. Um, for them, and a lot of them get these big guts because of some of the hormones they get on anyway. And I think a lot of them play, pl place blame on deadlifts and squats. This is mm -hmm. largely a myth, and it's well, caused a lot of people not to listen, do the two best I was, exercises. I was taking all the steroids, and I was deadlifting and squatting like crazy, and I have one of the nastiest V tapers. It has 95-plus percent to do with your genetics. Mm. If you have a good hip-to-shoulder ratio and you pile on muscle on your shoulders and your back from doing deadlifts and overhead pressing and squatting, and you'll end up still with the same ratio to your waist. So even if you did put on a little bit of muscle there, you're going to also put it on the back so much that it's it's going to look the same. It's not... It's so silly to me that we this this message has been uh, perpetuated into the, the masses. And it really only... It, it, I, I guess... If I was a um, a competitor, that the amount of deadlifting and squatting that I would do in comparison to a lot of the other work would be uh, wouldn't be like the average person. So my my average client, I'm telling them that I want them deadlifting and squatting every single week. Maybe if I'm a competitor, I'm less concerned about you know watching my deadlift or my squat go up. 200 300 pounds and becoming a great squatter or deadlifter uh i want to get i want to get the some of the reap some of the benefits from it but maybe it's not something i'm training two three times a week like most people or like a lot of our programs that we have for the average person it's so funny because the average person is looking to work out to get leaner you know boost their metabolism improve their health and mobility and build some muscle so when you're squatting and deadlifting and you combine that with a good diet you're going to get leaner and then you're going to build some muscle. Um, how much muscle are you going to gain around your waist? Maybe, I don't know, uh, not even a quarter inch. How much inches are you going to lose off your waist by getting leaner? A lot. A lot. I mean, most of us, especially men, store a lot of our body fat around our waist. So what you're going to do is you're going to take out two of the most effective exercises known to trainers and coaches, squats and deadlifts, for fear that you're going to thicken your waist when really get leaner. That makes all the difference. Not That's to, what's going to shrink not your Not only that, but like how much deadlifting and squatting does for the glutes. Mm -hmm. And the glutes are part of that, what give us totally. that hourglass and that V-taper look. So you- You so you, you, yeah, you should develop the major muscles more. Like right. Focus on that. Right. So, you know, you got to think your, your hips, your hips are here and then your waist is up here. And by deadlifting and squatting, you're going to build the butt and the glutes a lot more than skipping those exercises to do things like what? Kickbacks, walking lunges, leg press, other inferior movements to go when, it, that, when it comes to building your glutes. <laughs> so you're, you're going to eliminate those in fear of the a little bit that your obliques may build from doing the deadlift. This and is the where squats. my brain literally short circuits. <laughs> I just don't, I don't fucking get it. I don't get it. If you're trying to build muscle, you're trying to build muscle. Trying to get stronger, you have to be able to support your upper body, and you know what are we doing here? Like, it's one hundred percent from the bodybuilding community. Yeah, I mean that's to the point where men are were, are wearing waist trainers. Right, you have men that are working out, which is the equivalent to a boob job. Right, it, you have, no, it's worse. Not no, worse. it's way. You're worse. actually losing stability and muscle and causing yourself. You're Atrophy, dramatically increasing. Right. Yeah, yeah. You're, it's like you're wearing for a, the sake of vanity. Is my point. It's like you're wearing a cast. We and we haven't. Dis, we haven't. I don't. It's been a long time. Actually, we, this was something we hammered a lot in probably the first like 300 episodes, and we haven't circled back around to this in a long time. And I know we have a, obviously a, a much larger audience today than back then. The the this come this, this is why they they wear these waist trainers. So the the male and the female. It's like a corset. Yeah, it's a court. They wear this corset around their waist, 
And the reason why the there's before and after pictures that show it working and then people measuring, look, I lost two inches on it, is because you've lost, you've killed the muscles. The same idea that somebody, if you were to break your arm and you put it in a cast for six months or whatever the time frame you normally wear a cast after a broken arm, and you and you cut open the cast, what does your left arm that had the cast on look like compared to your right arm? It looks like a noodle. Mm-hmm. I mean, you lost all the muscle on there. That's what you're doing to your waist. Now, for somebody who is, I guess, 100% stuck on the the vanity of what I need to look like on stage to win, try and win a trophy, and this creates the illusion of a better hip to waist or, uh, hip to waist ratio and shoulder to waist ratio, and that's all you give a shit about. I guess maybe these are these are steps that you can take. But if you're the fucking average person, this is the stupidest and most ridiculous thing. It's I think it's stupid for those people to do it. I think it's even more stupid and ridiculous for the average person to be doing this because what you're compromising. I know yeah, a young totally. I know a young lady that uh, because she wore this these waist trainers because they encourage you to wear them all day or sleep with them, and this is how the muscles shrink because your the corset is st- stabilizing your body. The like muscles a, now, like a cast, can, like yeah. a cast. She actually had a blockage in her intestines because it's so tight, mm. and it caused problems. Had to go and get surgery, which completely ruined uh, her aesthetics or whatever the looks. Like right. it, this, the obsession with shrinking the waist is one of the worst obsessions ever in the fitness space. Now, yes, it's true. Um, it is, you know, a somebody who's lean is going to have a nicer hip to waist ratio for women or a waist to shoulder ratio in men. That's true. But going to the extent of hurting yourself, damaging your body or preventing yourself from becoming more fit, strong and healthy in order to achieve this illusion, it doesn't look better in real life. No, it okay. really doesn't. If you look at like p- pull up some pictures of cuz this this got a, this obsession happened in the you know the you know 100 200 years ago where women were wearing actual corsets. Um, and causing lots of problems and back problems, and they had these tiny little waists or whatever. Do you know what these women look like with these corsets off? If you were standing in front of you naked, it wouldn't look good. It looks bad. Yeah. It doesn't look good on a man either. So, like to have this obsession to create this illusion, um, you actually don't look any better. All you got to do is get lean. Get lean. Whatever your waist size is, based on your genetics, is what it is. Build the muscle so you have this nice, strong, stable physique. Yeah. In real life, that will make Work that will with look your body's potential. And please, that will look the best. God, do not eliminate squats and deadlifts for that reason. Dumb. 